but moving on. With candidates like Amin Merchant, Gabriel Khan, and Joe Torres all coming from large delegations, how do you plan to minimize the power gap between big and small delegations? And let me remind you, the political party system was in fact set up to minimize that gap, but obviously its efficiency isn't very, it's not very efficient in doing so, but how do you have any ideas on how to minimize that gap personally? Um, well, you know, in terms of candidates, you know, that really was the idea for political parties, but the problem here has become, um, we, at least for candidates, let me just talk about that really quickly. Um, the, the problem really here has become, we have people who are chairing these different parties and they're from larger delegations. They have friends already. Um, so they, they kind of go after them or they kind of listen to them when, when these kinds of things happen. So if they don't know who you're from, if they don't know what delegation you're from, they don't really know who you are. Uh, then I guess it may definitely be harder to get in a party, as Colin was uh, speaking about earlier. Um, you know, I really think um, some of it comes personally from from you. It's kind of some of it's on your end. Uh, you need to really throw yourself out there and be someone unique, somebody that um, somebody that is different from all the rest. I s we have a delegate named Andre from. I would like to say Simi Valley, and they're very close to our delegation. And you know, it's really weird. He throws himself out there, and he almost comes and hangs out with our delegation more than his own, which is really strange. Um, but you know, it's when when you talk about really having a problem between um, smaller delegations and having candidates from larger parties, it's not really um, it's not really the size of the delegation that backs them. It's they. They definitely need to really show themselves and be able to go out there in full confidence initially and be able to get the support of other delegations. And I, for one, have seen that that's not terribly difficult to do if you're a very unique person. Thank you. Um, to minimize the inequality in the, represent in the representation of small delegations as officers, but I really think we should utilize two things. Um, one is we have this new great website, ourcaliforniaagenda.com or .org or dot .com. And, um, and this is a great platform for delegates from big or small delegations to promote themselves and to spread the word about themselves. And I think if that's utilized, that's one thing that small, delegate, small candidates from small delegations can utilize. And another thing um, is cluster and brother and sister delegations. Um, this year, I remember Bob too, all the party chairs were going after us and they were all trying to get, get at least for me, they were all trying to get me to join their party. And at the end, I, was, I just was wondering, I was like, be real with me, why do you want me in your party? And one of the chairs was real with me and told me, we want you because of dibs. And dibs, for people who don't know, is this new cluster that Berkeley delegation has become part of this year with um, the SRVs and DVY and IDF. And um, and it's not like Berkeley delegation is that big, but the fact that we are in a cluster and we meet three times a year, um, like try to get the people in the party to get me in their party and cause a lot. Um, and I think that if we try and work with the delegations and create bonds between small delegations and big delegations and all delegations that are around each other, it gives more of a platform for candidates from smaller delegations to have more of a chance. Thank you. Eli always gets to talk about our California agenda before I do. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway. Our California agenda is an amazing website. I joined not long before SAC. Actually, I had just found out about it. So more, more publishing to our California agenda, specifically in regards to people who are going to be seeking higher office, people who want to be in leadership and are from smaller delegations. And Eli, are, we have the same answer. I feel so bad. And also, myself being from the San Diego Supercluster, um, it's a lot more helpful, I think, than what I would get with just my YMCA. My YMCA is only 30 people, but when we combine and we're San Diego all together, we're over 100 people. And I feel like the support that I'm getting from SDSC, in addition to the support I'm getting just from Palomar, is going a long way to help me. And I feel like also candidates who are, who are unique, who are recognizable, who are charismatic, who are intelligent, and who are willing to just go out there and put themselves out to everyone with every single ounce of personality that they have, I feel like that goes a long way into helping delegates from smaller delegations. Um, going along with what the other candidates said, our California agenda, you should join it if you're gonna run for something. 
Um, but also, um, I think the political party system is actually a great way to get your name out there. And I think over the years, as the political party system grows and gets stronger, um, the candidates who are running from that party who are from smaller, smaller delegations are going to have an advantage and they're going to start getting more they're going to start getting more um, recognized by their parties and although big, big delegations have has been a problem in YNG for God knows how long um, I think the political party system by strengthening it is going to help um, get get smaller delegations candidates out there um, also about the cluster thing um, I'm actually going to have to disagree with both of you on that. I am from a smaller delegation who has grown into a bigger delegation over the years. And um, so I know what the junction is like. Um, I know that it is hard to run from a smaller delegation. But at the same time, um, I don't think clusters are necessarily the way to solve everything. Although I do love my sister delegation, CCY, it, I don't think um, the size of your delegation should matter in how good of a candidate you are. Um, like Matt said, you should be unique, charismatic, all of that, um, and really present yourself and get your, get your name out there if you're going to be a candidate and try to be the most qualified delegate for the position. Hi, I thought it was interesting that a lot of people were addressing the question of super clusters and presenting that as like some way to somehow aid the inequities between the various delegations in terms of um, manpower and woman power, uh, in terms of who's going to be voting and campaigning for various candidates. But I think that it's just interesting that that they see it that way because what I see is as a member of a delegation from Sacramento of 17 people is all I see is that these delegations that are already, already relatively big are grouping into these larger and larger groups. So again, whenever you try to make, you know, the, uh, the party system or the, you know, the system of big versus small delegations more fair, all that really happens is it becomes more unfair. And I think that that's a lesson that we can take into the future in YNG, because you know, l you know, the bottom line is life isn't fair, and you know, it sucks, but it's true. None of us like it, but that's the way it is. I'm from a delegation of 17 people, you know, I have to deal with that. I try to compensate for it by being the best candidate that I can be. But um, you know, as for the parties, I think that I have to disagree with Sally. I don't think that the notion that they're going to somehow grow better over time is true. I think you can look to real politics and see that the political parties actually go worse over time. And I think that that's probably exactly what's going to happen with YNG, and I don't want to see that happen. Moving on. Candidates are constantly offering change, but often don't follow through with their promises. What change can you bring to YNG, and how do you plan on carrying it out and ensuring that it will actually happen? Okay, well, here's the thing. Youth in government, we all know, is amazing. Um, we all know it's it's so fantastic, not just because of what it is, it's because of the people that we have in it. Um, but one of the things that I really want to go into, um, and you know, the way I'm going to get this accomplished is, I, I've never seen this actually done with a governor's office before, um, is I kind of, the best way to phrase this up would be to say devil's advocate. Um, kind of like the NIC adversary general, um, I want to take some lobbyists um, to actually go and follow through uh, carrying out my platform. But I also want to get some lobbyists to go and try to kill some of the bills which would probably mo be most preferable to fit into my platform. Uh, the thing is, I think that what we need as, um, as delegates, we need competition. We need something which seems very reasonable, uh, such as like larger companies, larger corporations that are not looking out for what is best in um, for, for the citizens of the state of California, that is. We need that type of influence being thrown upon our delegates so our delegates can learn how to overcome this uh, and then they can apply that out in the real world. Uh, I've been dealing with large uh, federal agencies such as NASA, the Department of Energy, and large group contract companies called uh, you know, Boeing uh, for cleaning up a, uh, a rocket testing site near where we live um, in the valley in Los Angeles for a very long time now. And the thing is, they're, some of these, these companies, they, they're not necessarily looking out for what is best for the community, uh, along with federal agencies, that is. They're not looking out what's best for the federal, uh, for the, <laughs> the, the community. But we, I think it would be really great to strengthen our values and be able to go a little bit deeper in with our delegates and to be able to present challenges uh, such as that. And I would be the one to go out there and do that. 
So I, I think trying something new, I'm definitely willing to put my reputation on the line for this, and uh, I look forward to doing so. So thank you. Hey, that's a good question. So where I believe how I'm going to get the things that I'm going to promise done, it all lies in initiative. So what I want to promise for you guys for next year, what I promise for you guys for next year, is to get more media coverage. Because each year right here, we prove that we're the voice of the youth. We're more than just a cool program for teens. And I think that California's general public should know about it and should know what we have to say. And so as Berkeley president, I had taken the initiative, got our bill hearing night on TV. And even though it like made it on public television, and even though it may seem like something so cool, but something really hard, it really wasn't that hard. All it took was just t making the step, taking the initiative. And we have Congress people, we have people in the government who are interested in what we have to say in, the, in their constituents, in the youth. And I think we should really utilize this, take the initiative, contact them, con work with delegations and get meetings between a local representative and the delegation. You know, work with delegations, get their bill hearing nights on TV, work with media and get, our co get media coverage of our conferences. It all lies in taking that extra step and contacting these people. It's not, it's not impossible, it's not even extremely hard in most cases, it's just, again, it's initiative. And that's why I would promise you. Thank you. All right, so the thing that I'm looking at, the thing I want to see next year is I want to see YNG's delegates have more input into things that they think should be changed about the program. And that's why I've been talking this conference about program-specific bills, which is, which is pr uh, bills that we can write about our program as recommendations to YNG's governing board. And I feel that when this, uh, when I'm, if I'm governor, and if I'm governor when I put this program in place, I feel like that's the most direct way to give YNG delegates an input into their program and I feel like that's something that all of us, we come here and we do what we do. We deserve to be able to put input into the program and change what we as a whole feel needs to be changed. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot before I decided to run for youth governor. Um, I think that what I'm promising are plausible changes that have actually been done before, um, such as programs from the 61st, like the texting program I mentioned, before during one of my speeches and um, the Michigan Exchange program that I'd like to conduct again with one of the states. Um, those were two programs that were very successful in the 61st year and I'd like to bring those back and I don't know why we ever got rid of them. Um, I also am proposing changes that I can actually do myself, like never staying in the gov governor's office and being a mobile governor, um, going around the program areas and making sure that the program is running the way it should be. and. Um, yeah, really looking for the best in what I'm trying to do for this program, so. Hey, um, all right, I basically agree with almost everything that everyone said so far. In terms of bringing reform to the um, program, however, I think that you kind of need to be careful because if you look at history of both the program and of the outside world, it's kind of dangerous to go into a program that works well, like YNG does, and say, you know what, but we can make it work better, and here's how, and we're gonna do it right now. You know, change this, 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 and this. And, you know, and then turns out, if you, you know, flip all those switches and change all those options within the program, you know, that has a, you know, an impact that you didn't see coming, you know, like the political parties have. You know, we didn't see all this division coming, but, you know, we shoulda. And um, I think that we need to be really careful about changing the program. And I think that there are a lot of things that, you know, obviously would have a good impact, like getting more media coverage. Again, it's just about taking the first step. Um, you know, I know that um, personally because uh, my family has recently taken in a, a girl from Haiti for a month to get heart surgery, and uh, there was an article written about it in our local paper, the Sacramento Bee, and before you knew it, the Today Show wanted to film us. So we're going to be on the Today Show. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, if, if it's that easy to get on the Today Show, you know, Y&G, you know, 3,000 people, you know, can obviously, you know, get that done.